All right. Hello, folks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from people around the world. Well, let's get to business. Uh, first things first, we have all our sponsors here to thank for. And we have a lot going on in our Discord channels. If you want, uh, you can drop some questions on Q&A. Big, bigger is oops, going on. oops, oops. OK, we got a, a Capture the Flag running. We got Career Village running. We got a lot of stuff. So let's jump into, uh, let me take this. and. Cassandra's intro, bringing the threat modeling approach to determine the current state of your mental health, using data to determine the type of intervention needed. These are just the tip of the iceberg that Cassandra's talk will bring to us. With experiences in education, nonprofit, and mental health, she is a trained crisis interventionist and a peer support group facilitator with the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. Cassandra currently acts as the president of the Neurodiversity Affiliate of the Women in Cybersecurity Organization. She is a mentor in the Next Gen Leaders Program for Disability in and also an advisory board member and presenter for the 2022 SENS Neurodiversity Summit. Her interests include cybersecurity and, as a Brazilian man says in times like this, really? I'd never have imagined that. I think we have a Sherlock Holmes here, folks. Continuing. Also, digital product development and risk management. She enjoys gardening, playing with her dogs, and learning innovative technologies. Cassandra's talk has been re recorded, and she'll be with us on the Discord chat to answer any questions throughout the presentation and after. Attendees, friends, and staff, here's Cassandra L. Pierre's Threat modeling your mental health strategies to identify, understand, and mitigate threats to your emotional well being. Take us away. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is a pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to speak with you all. A couple of years ago, I attended my first tech conference and was introduced to accomplished women in cybersecurity. It was honestly a surprise to see the variety of specializations that led to successful careers. I was even more surprised to see that it already had skills that were transferable to a role in cyber. Having this opportunity to network with and learn from an array of professionals made the fleeting notion of a career pivot real to me. My initial love was OSINT and social engineering. Through networking, however, I met one of my mentors an accomplished professional in the threat intelligence community who would later go on to teach, sponsor, and advise me. As a Black woman new to cyber, having this support has been very empowering. When I started to think about submitting an abstract to speak today, I really wanted to stay true to my passions and to provide something of value to others. The Diana Initiative was the first conference I was able to attend, so this moment is incredibly special. As a result, my topic today, Threat Modeling Your Mental Health, was born. When I was younger, I wanted to be a doctor. I later whittled down that interest into working in or around the field of psychiatry. It became a special interest of mine as I love the complexity of the mind and the way it works. I sought out experiences that would help me to learn more about the field that would also give me opportunities to gain skills and to help others. Consequently, I had the opportunity to train and get certified as a crisis interventionist, to work in a psychiatric hospital supporting acutely ill adults and children, to provide direct support to those diagnosed with mood disorders, and most importantly, to bring strength to and support family, friends, and colleagues experiencing a mental health crisis. Over the last 15 years, I have been a mental health advocate, a caregiver, and appear. To be effective in a mental health setting, you must be able to quickly analyze a situation, gather information as a crisis event unfolds, determine the severity of the crisis, 
and implement tools at hand to mitigate damage and to reestablish safety and security. One moment of hesitation could be the difference between a full-blown crisis and a quiet shift, a call to 911 or a call to a therapist, a life lived to the fullest or remembering a life cut too short. On the job, I learned to read body language, to recognize nonverbal cues and pattern behavior, to trust my colleagues to have my back and to jump in when they needed me. I was part of a team. We had a shared mission and we took our responsibilities seriously. As I continued to explore threat intelligence, I saw that there were similarities in the skills I honed while working in mental health and the intrinsic behaviors required to be an effective cyber threat analyst. Agility, critical thinking, curiosity, a love for learning, communication and problem solving, and leadership qualities were skills that appeared in descriptions for both careers. I obviously don't work in healthcare anymore and I am not professionally working as a cyber threat analyst. So why am I here today? And what does all of this have to do with you? Let's look at the last couple of years. In the last three years, we have all experienced an inordinate amount of stress and change. The reality is people are tapped out. The difference I have seen, however, between those who have been maintaining and or thriving and those who are perpetually struggling has been the implementation of an effective plan to manage difficulties as they arise. Individuals who prioritize daily wellness activities were able to effectively identify and respond to environmental stressors and have been successful in remediating and recovering from stress when it occurred. We become resilient when we recognize, remediate, and recover from stressful situations over time. Our ability to manage life stressors, to stay mentally and physically healthy, and for us to be present in our life and active in the lives of our loved ones first starts with the ability to recognize risks to our mental well-being. We must then be able to determine the potential negative impact of these risks and to use the tools at our disposal to create an effective strategy to mitigate these threats. Let's look at some data. According to the American Institute of Stress, yes, there's an Institute of Stress, about 33% of people report feeling extreme stress. 77% of people experience stress that impacts their physical health. 73% of people have stress that impacts their mental health. 48% of people have trouble sleeping because of stress. The Global Organization for Stress reports that 75% of Americans experienced moderate to high stress levels in the past month. 80% of people feel stress at work. This is nuts. People who tend to experience particularly high rates of stress include ethnic minorities, women, single parents, and people responsible for their families' healthcare decisions. How many of us fit in two or more of those categories? Do you see yourself in those statistics? The Recovery Village says that once a source triggers stress, various symptoms will emerge unless the person uses effective coping skills to manage the problem. The most common symptoms of stress are irritability, fatigue, lack of motivation or interest in things, headaches, appetite changes and upset stomach, muscle tension, and for some, the resurgence of chronic pain or illness. Stress affects the entire body and is linked to many co-occurring mental and physical health problems like heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, depression, anxiety. So what about the cybersecurity community? In May, Tech Monitor said that burnout is on the rise and that more than a third of cybersecurity professionals are considering quitting in the face of long hours and heavy workloads. 
On June 29th in ZDNet, it was said that cybersecurity leaders are anticipating mass resignations within the air due to the growing threat of attacks combined with industry skill gaps or perceived industry skill gaps. A survey of 500 workers in the US and the UK indicates that more than one third of them would leave due to high stress levels and workloads negatively affecting work-life balance and their mental health. This is unfortunate. Additional factors that increase stress and negatively affect our physical and mental health are being on a team that is not diverse, rigid power structures are in place and they are not inclusive. If a person feels like they are unable or incapable of belonging on their team, this will cause problems. Teams that are overworked and understaffed. How many of us knows how this feel? 50, 60, 70 plus hours a week is not healthy. And in the long term, it is going to negatively affect your health. Opportunities that have a high mental cost or a high price to get in. Studying and taking certifications and applying to jobs and not getting interviewed and getting ghosted. These things over time will affect your mental health. It will make you anxious. It will make you depressed. Be aware of what you are putting yourself through. Cultures where microaggressions Bullying and isolation are common control tactics. The amount of stories that I've heard from women, neurodiverse people, BIPOC individuals, talking about work cultures that minimize their importance, minimize their work and isolate them is growing. This is a problem and it's not just in cybersecurity, it's happening all over. In cultures where overwork is praised and PTO and rest is scorned, where you feel like a slacker for taking a day off, not okay. I have received so much from the cybersecurity community in the last two years, a renewed sense of purpose, friends I consider family, and solid plans for my future. Today, I want to give back. I will share strategies that I hope will help you to better recognize, respond, remediate, and recover when you are pushed to your limit mentally and physically. So let's talk threat modeling. What is it? On a high level, we know that threat modeling is a method of optimizing network security by finding vulnerabilities, identifying objectives, and developing countermeasures to either prevent or mitigate the effects of cyber attacks against a system. How can we apply this methodology to our mental health? We want to take a step back and analyze the threats impacting us, determine the impact, and take steps to resolve them. First, we need to recognize that we are working with a compromised system. We all have vulnerabilities, especially today. To respond effectively to a threat in our environment, we must first know what and where these spots are and have a plan before the threat presents. What does stress look like in your life? The Recovery Village says the top causes of stress include worries about money or bills, poor work-life balance, there it is again, unresolved trauma, family responsibilities, toxic relationships, neurodiversity, not feeling like you belong or fit in anywhere, personal or family issues, job instability or difficulties at work, and personal safety. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Let's walk through a system scan to see where we are today. How are you feeling? Is it difficult to sleep because your mind is racing? Are you eating healthy food regularly and drinking water? Are you anxious, preoccupied with work or your relationships? Do you feel sad or lonely? Do you struggle with chronic pain or illness? Do you feel like you are too busy to take care of your physical and mental health? 
If you answered yes to any of those questions, having a wellness plan in place will help you to find the support you need with the correct intervention when you need it. Mental health is as important as physical health. So it is necessary for you to prioritize both. An effective plan is based on accurate data. To increase your awareness during this upcoming week, take 15 minutes before you go to bed to think about how you are feeling mentally and physically. Keep a journal or take notes in your phone. Jot down what is on your mind. Write down what is bothering you. Put it on paper and make it real so you can deal with it. We all have specific issues that directly impact us personally that predispose us to stress. Throughout my professional career, I have dealt with mentally taxing situations from sick family members to toxic work culture, to my own health issues, to switching jobs or buying a house and moving. All of these events put me in a taxed mental space. As I've matured though, I now know to plan for these situations. I regularly meet with my therapist and with my doctor. I reach out to friends. I sleep in on the weekends if I can, and I spend time outside with my dogs. I silence my phone. I remove, I actively remove myself from toxic situations and interactions. I try to protect my space and my mind so that I can manage through challenging times. Those who know me for years know that I will regularly fall off the radar. Why? It's because I need the space to be better. Almost half of all Americans will experience a mental health crisis in their lifetime. You are not defective if you are struggling. You are human. I recognize the TTPs that put me at risk. Do you? To get your plan off the ground, you will need a skilled and supportive team behind you. Your wellness team can consist of a partner, family, friends, your therapist, a doctor, personal trainer, or your dog trainer, whoever, anyone who can support you as you begin a deliberate strategy to maintain good health. When you are healthy, you will show up every day in a better frame of mind for yourself, your children, and your relationships, both personal and professional. Prioritizing your health also supports those that rely on you. I know that in many cultures, asking for support from an individual outside of your small circle is looked down upon because personal business should stay in the family. Some people are also convinced that speaking out and asking a stranger for help is not a good decision. This is untrue. I've received authentic and educated support from counsel sought outside of my friend and family circle. With the distance comes objectivity. You can work with a professional on coping strategies and reframing behaviors, and also incorporate the support of close friends and family. Tell them how you're doing, share details about your plan to get healthy, and ask them to keep you accountable. It is easy to keep our struggles a secret and to say that we are fine when we are going through challenging times. Believe me, I know, I've done it and I've been there. Family dynamics, culture norms, and a lack of support can prevent you from being as honest as you need to be to find adequate help. Now is the time to speak up for yourself and to act. You create the plan for you. You can decide what your accountability methods will be. You must be honest and open if you want to receive effective support. The VAST framework, visual, agile, simple, Threat modeling involves all stakeholders, both technical and non-technical in the threat modeling process. It simplifies participation and is a distributive process of shared ownership across the enterprise. Similarly, your plan should include everyone and anything that will keep you healthy, stable, and sane. So what is your plan? In response to, to increasing cybercrime, data breaches, insider threats, and lack security hygiene, companies spend almost $1 trillion in 2021 on cybersecurity products and services, 
according to Nova Force 2019 Security Threats and Trends Report. Smart organizations are getting ahead of this problem by having an effective, dynamic threat modeling plan in place, as you should for your health. When times get really tough, do you even know what to do? Your wellness plan should include a consistent approach that is scalable to respond to increased threats to your health. It can include preventative activities like spending time with your friends, engaging in your favorite hobbies and actions. You can take in critical situations like checking in with your therapist or taking a mental health day. Additionally, if you find that there are specific times that are more stressful for you, such as the end of the year or the end of the month when bills are due, you can preemptively schedule time to maintain wellness and to relax. During this time, go take a walk in the park, get a facial, have lunch with a friend, or even spend time alone while the kids are at school. These actions will fill you back up when stress taxes our system. Scheduling these activities on the calendar gives you a respite to look forward to and to keep you going in tough times. So when life becomes too much, how do you slow things down to create an environment where you can catch your breath and focus on yourself? What benefits do you have that you can tap into right away? Your company health plan and employee assistance plan support groups, telehealth appointments, wellness apps, and PTO are all tools that you have at your disposal that can provide you with some relief. If you have never closely reviewed the details of your mental health balance and benefits, commit to looking at it this weekend to see what entitlements you may have. What is your PTO balance? I find that if I schedule my days off months in advance, it keeps me accountable to take a break. I have been known to go months at a time without taking time off from work. And it physically affected me in a very, very negative way. You do not want to be there. If you have PTO, use it. Schedule your time off at regular intervals, even if you have no plans. It will be difficult to leave amid a heavy workload and a taxed team if you know that you have a lot of work on your plate. But if you know time off is coming up, you definitely can plan accordingly. If you are unemployed, support groups operated by organizations like NAMI and DBSA can provide you with a community of people to connect with and learn from. Train volunteers with professional and lived experience facilitate discussion and provide guidance. In our communities, local libraries offer free courses on relaxation, arts and crafts, and many fitness studios will give you a free session to try out their classes. Book a yoga or Pilates class and go check it out. Do something different. YouTube also has a lot of free content, guided meditations, exercise routines, even music and language lessons. All of these activities are rejuvenating. Create a space in your world for refilling practices before stress becomes a problem and empties your cup. Define your personal security posture. Know what tools you have in your possession and know how to respond when you need help. Know when to seek professional help. Now that you know how to be more mindful about where you are mentally and you are taking stock to evaluate how you feel, what do you do with this information? How do you know when it is time to call a professional? I'm not a professional, so I will tell you what to do or what you can do. There are a variety of ways to determine when it's time for a system shutdown and a reboot. Personally, I use a number system. When I wake up in the morning, I rate how I feel on a scale of one to five. One is horrible, five, amazing. If I have a straight week of ones during the next weekend, I will actively seek an intervention. I'll call my doctor if I'm feeling physically ill. If I have a low mood or high anxiety, I will connect with my therapist. I let those around me know that I am not feeling well. I openly communicate. When I am saying I'm having a one day, we all know what that means. Another great method is spoon theory. You can create a system 
that works for you. You don't have to do what I do. Look at the trends of your behavior and use the data to make an informed decision about what you need. If you need to see a mental health professional, if you are insured, check to see what professionals are in your network. Long-term support can be costly, so choosing a therapist or a doctor in network is not only smart, but it will save you money. Psychiatrists are medical doctors who specialize in treating mental health conditions and prescribe medication. Psychiatric nurse practitioners are an alternative to seeing a psychiatrist. They can be less expensive and are equally effective. Therapists like clinical social workers and psychologists with talk therapy will provide you with an outlet to explore your needs, to create new behaviors and reframe your thinking. They can also help you to work through past trauma and coach you through your wellness plan. Use your first couple of therapy sessions to determine if your therapist is a good fit. If the conversation seems forced or you're not comfortable, it is okay to find someone else. Check reviews online or ask a friend for a recommendation. Look for a good match and build rapport. Regularly check in with your therapist to ensure that your plan of action is appropriately addressing your issues. Stress is real. Do not minimize your difficulties. Please be honest with how you are feeling. You deserve to feel better. If you need to scale up your intervention, do it. If that means taking time off, requesting accommodations from your job, taking a leave of absence, or even, leave, or even leaving your job, please do what works for you. And most importantly, if you need someone to speak to, please call a crisis hotline. Dial 911 for immediate help or go to your local hospital. Remember, those who are managing their stress effectively are using wellness techniques they know work for them. These routines frame their day and keep them in a very healthy space. Please do what works for you. Managing stress and prioritizing wellness means eating healthy food, moving your body, drinking water, limiting alcohol, and unplugging to rest. Please ask for help when you need it. You can do this. Spend more time in nature. Spend time with positive people. Volunteer and give back. Mentor someone else. Don't wait until your system is bogged down, your batteries are depleted, and your health has been seriously compromised to start making incremental changes. Please start today. I hope you now have an idea of where you can start your journey and can take some ideas away from this talk to prioritize your mental health. To help you start the process, I've created a template you can use to draft your own threat model with a list of resources for you to continue to explore this topic. You can find it for download at my website located in my profile. Please reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn or on Twitter so we can continue to learn from each other, to encourage each other, and to support each other. We need to continue to bring awareness to this critical issue. Please take care and best of luck. Thank you so much.